Why did I make the movie? I did it very urgently out of a sense of commitment. I didn't, you know, I knew this was going to be a tough subject. Nobody was, it was going to be controversial, but I, I don't feel that it's, they're going, I really don't feel there's going to be that many movies on Bush. I, I think that we took our shot. They say, why didn't you wait five years? I didn't have five years to wait. I didn't know if I was going to be in a, Old, young enough still to make the movie, but above all, I felt that these pro these policies are in place and they're urgent to people to understand. I think many people do understand the movie. I think some people have missed the point and say, "Well, we know this about Bush." You know, that's a big statement. You know, Bush, first of all, is a mystery. He was a mystery until two thousand four five. The book started to come out. Hit the war to Iraq. Everybody thinks they know what happened. It's not that simple. Mr. President, what place do you think you'll have in history? In history? I mean, history will all be dead. <laughs> you may find yourself in a beautiful house. Fiasco. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Your film also humanizes Bush to an yes. extent that a lot of viewers might actually sympathize with the guy. I mean, yes. after seeing the film, do you find it a, a, an issue you have to deal with? Oh, totally, you have yeah. such strong many people I, uh, many young direct, many directors I met, including older ones, said, wow, I never thought I'd end up liking this guy. Uh, this is a, you know, this is not, this is beside the point to me. Uh, you can like a president and he can be a son of a bitch, you know. It's, the point is that I empathize, not sympathize. Empathize means to walk in the shoes of, to understand the person. If you understand somebody or you understand a phenomenon, it helps to heal, to get better, to, so, so that we don't have another bush, like a, in another form, sell us another same set of principles, which are militarism, revenge, big ego, all these things this were exhibited by Bush. He was a man not given to thinking. He was a man given to revenge and also proving that he was stronger than his father. Ruined it for us. The Bush name. Has he been imbibing something I don't know about? He had a devil. Devil in a white hat. I'll never get out of Poppy's shadow. Whoever remembers the son of the president anyway. John Quincy Adams. Yeah, but that was like 300 years ago, wasn't it? Both Nixon and Bush, I mean, in your films, they, are seem, they seem to be very much influenced by their father, the, the previous generation. So is this something that you would want to bring up, how these American presidents, how what they do basically uh, was some sort of an Oedipo, oh, yeah. Oedipo impact? I think this is true about any human being. I think this is our father and mother, tremendous influences on us, Bush especially. Nixon, his mother is a bigger influence probably than his father, I think, but uh, Nixon is a much more complex man, more profound in the sense that he has guilt and paranoia and the, and the ability to think that he may have been wrong. Bush is more like a piano concerto next to a symphony, uh, and the movie reflects it. It's a very simple movie. It's like a little bit, you know, two-dimensional man. He's not a three-dimensional man. He's not a man who has any deep thoughts about what have I done, right? In the movie, we give him a dream scene. It's a dream scene, it's unconscious, where his father tells him he's trashed his legacy. I think that's the, the depth to which we could go. So Bush is like a little bit of a lighter uh, piano concerto. But at the end of the piano concerto, if it's a good one, you have to realize that the man may not be deep, but the impact of his uh, decisions is enormous. He has, to me, much more importance than Reagan or Bush in terms of what he laid out. Uh, Nixon, of course, as you're right, made the war power, the concept of the executive authority, a big issue. And as a result of that, it led to this Bush revolution, you know. But uh, two different kinds of styles, two different kinds of movies. And people were said, why doesn't Oliver Stone making like JFK or... I think you're wrong, you know, it's, it's, the movie was done at a, at a very tight, but that wasn't the reason. The movie had to be simple. There was a simplicity to Bush, which appealed to the American people. At the end of the day, the movie is a very subtle, subtle uh, mirror because it looks back at the people who elected him, us, and says, you know, you fell for this guy. How did he become president? Why did you, if, if at all, like him? And how did he pull the wool over your eyes, basically? And because he's such an arrogant son of a bitch. Uh, you know, and the truth is, we've, the, the Americans 
reelected him. Uh, I find that amazing. So I think Americans are a little uncomfortable with the movie. The American people want revenge. They like Afghanistan. They want more. Enhanced interrogation techniques utilize fear scenarios. You mean like pulling out their toenails? <laughs> They would like to say, Obama, it's over. It's not over. It's not over. I, I think um, a movie that turns the, f the, the camera back on people, it's tough uh, sometimes for them to be comfortable. So finally, and does, it, does it mean that actually this film is different in to, um, from Nixon in right. the fact that W would be a film about the phenomenon and Nixon would be about a man? I mean. Yeah. Bush just yeah. signifies. There's no man at Bush. I mean, the man is not that interesting. We we we, we read everything. He's not with the man that you see in the movie is. You know, you may say that's not enough. I don't know. If there's anything more there. I read everything there is. Uh, I really think there's a strong Oedipal complex in the sense that his father was weak. He wanted to finish the Iraq War, and also prove that he was better than his father because he was a failure until 40 Bush. You, People forget what it's like to be a man at 40 years old. He failed at politics. He failed making money. He failed at sports. He failed at war. He failed at everything. He was a bum. And then he had 10 good years, and he thought he was on top of the world. Big mistake. It was the prodigal son comes home. Prodigal son ends up bad. Becomes Icarus. You know, Icarus, the myth. The Daedalus gives the, the son the wings to fly. He's entitled to become president. But he's not qualified, and Daedalus goes flying up to the sun and the wing and the sun melts the wings and that's what happened he wasn't ready and uh, it's a great story you know it doesn't happen if you think about it I mean we're so close to Bush people take it for granted but wait 10 years five years look back at this guy and say wow nothing like this has ever happened in American politics for some reason I'm being pretentious perhaps I keep thinking this guy is the equivalent of an American Napoleon I really do. Napoleon came out of nowhere and devastated. I mean, he, he was. some people say he was great, and some people say he was horrible for France because he destroyed the French army. I mean, the French went everywhere. But think about Napoleon. In 10, 12 years, he changed the world and he changed France. I think of Bush somewhat the same way. Okay. okay. Thanks very much. Thank Mr. you, Clarence. Thank you.